Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and members and friends of Trinity, it's good to be back with you for another candlelight conversation today as we are in the new year. And uh, today, as we record it, it's Epiphany, January the 6th. And so we are in a different location today, obviously. We're in the stairwell, which from the sanctuary down to the uh, parish hall downstairs. And you might be familiar with this uh, manger scene here, this uh, Christmas scene that we have up at Christmas time, where we have Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus and shepherd and animals and the three wise men that are here. And so uh, today on Epiphany, we think about how God revealed himself to uh, the foreigners, the wise men who came from the east. Uh, there's a bit of mystery about the wise men. We don't know much about them, but they, uh, they came from the east following the star, looking for the newborn king. And so we make the assumption that they were um, uh, hearing about the message of a savior who was to be born, promised by God, and, uh, and so during the Babylonian captivity of the children of Israel, that this message and this uh, promise of God came and, and was uh, given to the people of that land. And so this is a very possibility that they were following through on that. But I'd like to read for you the story of Epiphany from Matthew chapter 2, and we hear these words. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is a, a great story of intrigue and in, and, uh, and mystery and uh, suspicion and, and danger and warning and joy. As the wise men came to search for the, for the newborn king, we see from the story that Herod, the king there in the land, was jealous and fearful. And he had a plan. And his plan was not to go and worship the newborn king, but to destroy the newborn king. And we hear that in the words following. But the wise men were warned not to go back to Herod, and so they went home by a different way. And so uh, as we think about the story of Christmas and we look at this beautiful scene here before us, uh, what's wrong with this picture according to this word of God? And I, can, I think a lot of us know what's wrong with it, that at the time of in the, in the stable, in the manger, in the shepherds, that, that that happened long before the wise men came. They came later, after the child was born. And we know in the reading that they went to a house and they found Jesus there. We don't know how much time afterward that this took place. It uh, could have been up to two years when Herod had ascertained from them what time they saw the star. He may have used that uh, date to 
uh, tell his soldiers who went into Bethlehem later and they, they slaughtered the little babies, uh, children, little boys who were two years and younger. So, so there, it would have been sometime after the, the birth of Jesus when he was a young child, maybe a few months old or maybe up to two years possibly. We're not sure. But we are sure of this. We are sure that God wanted to include the Gentiles in his plan of salvation. And he revealed that his son, our Savior, is the, is the Savior for all people. We see that, of course, clearly in the, the most clear verse of Scripture about the gospel in John chapter 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he, the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So the wise men came bearing their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. So that's often why we see three wise men. There may have been many more that came on that time to worship the newborn king. But we're not told the number either way. We're told of the gifts and we're told of the fact that God had revealed his savior uh, to the world. And they came to worship him as their savior too. That message of the savior born for us in Bethlehem has gone out throughout the world. And it's clear that God's plan was to include all of us and every person, no matter what nation they're from or no matter who they are, God's plan of salvation included everybody. And we have the privilege and we have the, the honor to share that word with others and to remember that when we see other people who are maybe different than we are, maybe who don't agree with us in various ways, that we see them also as people for whom the Lord came and that we have an opportunity and obligation to pray for them and to speak of the Lord's love for them too, even as he has loved us. So this epiphany season that we are beginning now is a season of revealing. And as we hear the scriptures and the messages in the services on the weekends, then we will hear about how the Lord is revealed as our savior and his good gifts are revealed to be a blessing for all of us. So let us join in, in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord and savior, we praise you that you are revealed as our savior and the savior of the world. Help us Lord to share this good news with our neighbors and friends and even with those that we have opportunity to speak to that we may be different from. And we ask that you would fill our hearts with joy and also with love and compassion for all people, even as you have had love and compassion for us. We pray this, Lord, in the strong and saving name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.